Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's football show. We're live on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. Delighted you could join us. I'm Peter Martin. Alan Ruff, as ever, over the decade, is always by my side. We've got Richard Foster here and Begbie. Um, <laughs> it's as simple as that. <laughs> we've got Tom, we've got Tom wearing, and we've got Tom wearing his great gear. I love him. Shake of all, give me abuse. I know. Is this is the great thing about it, Ruffy. That's the great. This is the this is the dressing room, isn't it? It's no, the boot room. We no, like to cane each other. No, Richard, on his, his He's upped his, he's upped it now. Oh, he's, you've upped your game, but by the way, that's, that's, that's my usual, it's my standard three years for Robbo. Can I just say to you, by the way, uh, Richard's got his Balenciagas on, which yeah, is... That's out with my price range. Way, way out with my price Unless, it, unless somebody's doing fake ones Can on I, Facebook or something. I tell you, the God's honest truth, Ruffy, I think I bought a car <laughs> for the same price as him, and we all, we all went down to Blackpool in it and had the best weekend ever, and there was change. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't let me fool you though these are out with my price range as well <laughs> <laughs> the wife pointed them that's good aye uh, Ruffy no I've never what's the most you've gear. ever spent a bit of gear clothes that is <laughs> <laughs> I knew right away <laughs> I didn't even bother looking at you clothes uh, oh god I can't remember no? no not a lot not a lot okay. two or three hundred quid somewhere Ooh, that's right really brilliant um, ok what year was that <laughs> <laughs> that's last year probably <laughs> Anyway, great to have your company. Don't forget you can hit the subscribe button. We've got lots of football uh, to talk about. You can give us your opinion as well. There's so many people actually um, near and far joining us and just saying they, they, they love the show. Um, what a great event. Rangers versus Celtic was one of the messages posted to us and our two Sydney clubs. Alcohol at the game, fans all mixed in together. Australia accomplished something Scotland never thought possible. Um, so that's uh, one of the points that was made. Uh, also, great show. Love it, Pat in Donegal. Nice to have your company, Pat. Uh, Jim McKinnon says, I'm a huge fan of Alan McGregor. He's probably the best keeper we've ever had. He saved us on countless occasions, but there comes a time when I think a Changes necessary. I think that time is now. Uh, we give John McLaughlin the gloves till the end of the season. So there's all sorts of uh, opinions that you can post. You can also put them on our feed as well. Uh, try and keep them sensible and we will uh, address them as the programme continues. And if you download the PLZ Soccer app, you get all the breaking news and you get the show live every day. So there's a battle going on. I want you to have a look at the Premiership table before we get to tonight's fixtures because as well as Celtic and Rangers battling it out for the title, there's a few clubs there, Tam, that might think to themselves European football is well within their grasp and I'm going as far down as, what, 7th? I'd go even further. I think I'd go down to 9th, Aberdeen. You know, three points separating 4th and 9th is so, so tight. It's 1-1. One, one. Uh, I don't know what Hibs obviously have got that fourth position at the minute, but it can all change very, very quickly. We spoke about it the last couple of weeks. Definitely, you know, a race to the death between the bottom two. You know, to see who's going down, I think Ross County will be fine. Um, Dundee out, big favourites for me now to get relegated. So, lots to play for at both ends, I think. Yeah, and strangely enough, even with a game in hand, you know, you hear managers week in, week out, Richard, saying, well, we've got a game in hand and there's a couple of games coming up. If we win those and if we win that, we go, you're thinking to yourself, I mean, for example, Aberdeen, no wins in nine. You're thinking, where's your wins coming from? Yeah, I mean, that's a, you're always better to have played the games. You know, we're finding that out ourselves this season. But um, yeah, I mean, I mean, how many games have Dundee won all season? You know, so, so them having that game in hand, I think, is, is against St Mirren? You know, so I don't, I, yeah. don't, I don't think it's, you know, it's definitely not a gimme that... The, I can't see them actually winning many games from now to the end of the season. Um, it's going to be important once the league splits and they're playing all the teams round about them. Um, but I thought that result, you know, for, for Ross County the other night was huge, by the other day was huge, you know, beating because they could have been dragged right back mm -hmm. into it. But I think that's as Tam said there. I think that's kind of got them out of it, and it's it's between the two clubs at the bottom um, because looking at them both, you don't you don't see either of them winning winning many games because they don't score enough goals. Well, and and, and rather uh, ominously, I have to say for Dundee, it's not as if they're playing the remaining games against teams that are in the bottom half. I mean, I'm looking at the run in here. They've got Hibs, they've got Motherwell, St Mirren, Rangers twice, obviously one in the cup. Then they've got Aberdeen and Dundee United. You know, so the rest of the games that they're going to be playing against teams around them are after the split. This run in, you're thinking to yourself, where are they going to get the points from? Yeah, it's, it's a tough run of games. Obviously finishing with the Dundee Derby and, you know, been down relegation a few battles myself over the years. When it, when it breaks into that bottom six split, you've got to be within touch. Um, you know, and 
I think there's a, a real danger of maybe Dundee and St Johnson being really cut adrift um, and the other teams not having much to play for. So I think Dundee, they just have to stay within a win of St Johnson. You know, yeah. I think if they go five, six, seven points behind St Johnson, then they're doomed, they're not going to get enough points. Yeah, and it's a strange one for Mark <laughs> McGee to jump on the ship when it's sinking um, and difficult then to try and stabilise it, especially if behind the scenes, he, he, you know, he's, he, he's trying to put out fires. Especially because he can't get on the touchline either. Yeah. <laughs> to, you know, to give instructions to his team. You know, he's, he, I know he can work them all week, but I think it's it's you know been proven that it's better when your manager's on the touchline. But it's um, you know I, I felt it was a strange appointment at the time. Um, you know, I, th- I thought McPake had shown signs of of recovery, and I thought just you know give him until the end of the season and see how it goes. Strange this decision to sack him. Um, kind of strange to bring someone in from the relative wilderness. Um, he's not been involved in Scottish football for a few years, so um, yeah, just the whole place behind the scenes, the, the players themselves, obviously the new management team. It just it doesn't look good, um, especially with that result. You know, to get beat four 0 at home, and, and I watched the game, and they were so poor. And the goals they lose are just. I think it's it's as if the, the players have down tools and they've already accepted their fate. Yeah, that's an interesting one, Rafi, because quite simply, uh, that's the one thing Mark McGee is going to have to do. Is is it such a short time to try and get players back on side? Yeah, and uh, I don't think their fans buy into everything that a manager's doing. You know, they're always very critical. Uh, they they sort of a jump on everything. You know, very very quickly. Sometimes rightfully so if you're getting beat six six nothing at home or four nothing at home. But I, th- I thought the, the performance at Park Erwin, it was two each. If that late Celtic goal hadn't went in, it might again give them a wee bit of confidence, but obviously it hasn't, you know, with the result of the weekend. Yeah, OK. There's a lot of people obviously giving their tuppence worth. Who's going to get relegated? Give us your thoughts on that. Um, Steve McNamara says Dundee conceded relegation as soon as they sacked McPake for McGee. It's a shocking appointment uh, by uh, Gordon Strachan, um, or the chairman, whichever way you want to look at it. But um, it's it certainly put them behind the eight ball. We'll get the thoughts of uh, Tam on Dundee. Hibs get his prediction as well. Lots to talk about. Just before we get into the meat and bones of all the fixtures, a couple of things I want to get your guys' thoughts on. First one, Rafi, you'll know him. Um, I had the good fortune to meet him on more than a few occasions at Tyne Castle. Alan Anderson, the Hearts captain, um, I think a, a lot of people look at him with great fondness, has passed away at the age of 82. 475 appearances for uh, the Tyne Castle side. He had 31 goals in a 13-year spell. And I think a lot of people, I can remember, obviously, the joy when he was voted into the Hall of Fame. Um, and, of course, he was part of that heart side that almost won the league, but for all the goal difference that was going on in 65. Yeah, that, that was just before me, just maybe three or four years before me, him and we, Donald Ford. Uh, they're a terrific uh, heart side, uh, and the support was right behind them. And, you know, I think all the heart supporters remember that year, you know, but he was a pivotal centre-half of that team, you know, old-school centre-half, you know. But uh, they were a good side uh, and he was a good player and it's tragic when something like that happens. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, when you see his uh, stats, Alan Anderson will be remembered fondly uh, by the Hearts fans. Uh, Not only, uh, I mentioned there, the 1965 close-run league title race, but he was a Scottish Cup runner-up in 68 and uh, that goal average was changed dramatically uh, and it could have changed Hearts' fortunes um, and they could have won that league had the, the rules been changed to what they are nowadays. Hearts would have been the champions in 65, but he also got seven uh, caps. I think now, retrospectively, the SFA looked at that summer tour in 1967 and awarded people caps for playing in seven games under the uh, Scotland banner and playing for Scotland, representing Scotland. So I think that was nice for players to get that recognition as well. L- Ruffy, although, you know, yourself, you, you were... Uh, you know, Scotland stalwart, fifty-three caps. You you played in the in the big tournaments. Yeah, but there is there's lots of players out there, you know, who never got over the fifty, you know, and they should be remembered, you know, because they were a big part. You know, a lot of them get maybe twenty-five, thirty odd, you know, but uh, there was no even a silver medal going about then if you go to twenty-five. So yeah. yeah, I think it's good that they've changed the rules a wee bit, and, and these people are recognised. Yep, absolutely. Alan Anderson, uh, our thoughts go out to Alan's family and all his friends, and of course, heart supporters who uh, would have remembered him well from the days at the old Tyne Castle. Um, always like to recognise. 
players that have contributed to the tapestry of Scottish football. Of course, Alan just mentioned that he got it in the, the gold medal for 50 caps. You still got that in the in the case, Ruffy? Yeah, it's there, yeah. 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 I'm sure there's uh, a lot of players out there. There was one player in particular, I think it was Nasey. Did Nasey get to 50? Did he stop when 49? That's a good question. There's a couple of players you know, just stopped short. You know, but the, the remarkable one for me is Jim Layton, 92. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, absolutely. I think if Nasey had stopped just short of 50, you would have leathered him on the show and made sure. I mean, I think Barry was... Jim, Layton, Jim, Jim Layton was a proper Scotland goalkeeping legend, but yeah. a proper one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I stopped just short of one cap, so... Yeah, absolutely. You, uh, it was close though. There was a real push, um, but uh, uh, yeah, you're still time for you. <laughs> still I think. Uh, I think. Uh, we'll get many right backs. No, exactly. Well, I was going to say to you. I think you might have got some of the SO medals uh, in a collection folder. But Ruffy's got the real deal, haven't you, son? It's a lovely gold medal. It yeah. is a belter, by the way. Yeah, it is. Certainly yep, is. Absolutely. Is it, is it proper gold? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks the part for fifty caps. Well done. I'm so I'm surprised it hasn't melted it down. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> still, still, you well, can't. That was the first one. Yeah, <laughs> you can't take away the memories. Uh, okay, old firm down under. Everybody uh, yesterday talking about it. Celtic, I think maybe stole a march on Rangers on this one uh, because basically it was Ange's going home. Uh, there was a story in the paper saying, look, Celtic and Rangers are both involved in this tournament down under with two Aussie sides. Obviously, the World Cup is going on in Qatar, so anyone that's not involved may well be going down there for you know, some uh, winter break training. It's going to be hot. It's their summer. But the Rangers fans, some of them are not happy with this one because the lack of communication and they certainly don't like the idea of, uh, you know, Celtic uh, Rangers going to play Celtic far, far away. No, I, I can't get my head around that one. You know, there, there's enough Rangers and Celtic supporters in Australia who will buy into if the two of them were to go there and if they play each other, it'll be a, a sellout. You know, it, it is a bit far to travel, you know, but there's a lot of, you know, no games going on then, so you could treat it as maybe a, a you are going to treat it as a break but obviously a working break and it just depends who all goes you know but I, d I don't think it matters what players go everybody will buy into it in Australia yeah um, here's what Rangers had to say um, about this uh, tournament in Australia uh, Rangers will return to Australia this November with the club delighted to have accepted an invitation to the inaugural Sydney Super Cup, which will include the first ever international Old Firm fixture. With domestic action taking an extended break for the FIFA World Cup in Qatar, the Light Blues will travel down under for two hugely exciting matches in front of what is sure to be an outstanding range of support of both locals and those travelling from further afield. Uh, well, it's one of those, I, had to, I mean, I, I just don't get it. Just embrace it. It's a it's a game over there. They're getting well weighed in for it. How can you actually bump your gums and more about it? I, I don't I don't understand that either. I think that football's a business. You know, you've got to go and make money. You know, and it's a great opportunity. And we spoke about it before the show. Both teams will probably send their reserves in. Or a weakened team. You know, they're picking up three million pound. A lot of expats and uh, living in Australia getting the opportunity to see their club live. You know, in their own country. I think it's great as well. As Ruffy says it'll be a sellout. You know, I don't think there's ever an old firm friendly. I think there'll be plenty of tackles. You know, plenty, plenty. You know, things getting thrown in. So, I think supporters will lap it up. I think both clubs are getting well weighed in in terms of cash. So I don't see anything wrong with it. But it seems to be social media. You know, and a lot of people saying, "Oh, we shouldn't be playing naming friendlies and all that stuff." Clubs are getting three million pound each. You know, and and I want a break and probably go down there and do some training as well, which will help them for the course of the season in nice weather rather than in November here. Yeah. So for me, there's so many positives to it. Absolutely, and it's a chance for both clubs to actually push the brand down even stronger down there. Yeah, of course it is. I think, uh, again, uh, similar to you guys, it's it's hard to see the negatives here. You know, they're getting um, kind of a nice break. It'll be good for all the, the, the kind of supporters in Australia or nearby that can travel to the game who don't get a chance to come over here. Yes, it's not going to be the same as an old firm game, a competitive one in this country, but... I don't think it's it's they're not billing it as such, you know. It's it's just a, a kind of a, a tournament in, in Sydney, so just like you say, just go and embrace it and, and enjoy the fact that you know Rangers and Celtic are big enough to 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 warrant you know these uh, countries taking them over there to play a tournament, which I think is is good for Scottish football in the end. And you know if, if fans are over here complaining for whatever reason they can't get to the game or they shouldn't be playing in the friendlies, then. 
You know, I think it's maybe just get over it. Yeah. Would, would we, I mean, I've got a friend that I really want to see Ruffy over there in Australia. <coughs> He's been away for a wee while. It's, it could be a good, could be a good mm -hmm. wee jaunt for us down there. You know, obviously Tam's itching uh, to go down there, but Black, he'd be roasting in, yeah. in, in, mm -hmm. in, in, in <laughs> Australia. Yeah. T-shirts down there that yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Ruffy, could you handle the heat and everything? Yeah, well, we were there in a uh, World Cup qualifier against Australia, uh, the two-legged affair. We, we beat them 2 nothing at Hamden and we went to Melbourne for the return and it was tremendous. The <laughs> expats that were there just really bought into everything. The stadium was full. Hospitality was magnificent. Clean sheet, nothing? I am was on the bench. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely. It would have been great to take yourself, Richard, but obviously a couple of things going against you. You you might still be playing um, uh, in the championship and, of course, um, you know, your wife won't let you go. It's as simple as that. Is that fair? Is that fair? Is that fair? You can't even bill it as I'm on I tour think, with I the think, guys. I think the, the second bit's fair. The first bit, I don't know if we'll be playing the championship. <laughs> oh, you've got another year in you if Ruffy would get his finger out. Um, so I'm looking at right backs the other week there. Yeah, was that list you brought in with right backs that the boys were talking about? Yeah, absolutely. Hey, listen, we're going to talk about you. You get a good write up in the papers today. We're going to talk about that in a minute. Um, anyway, what do you make of it all? Rangers and Celtic down there. Um, Tam, it'll be great because, it, I mean, I don't think they'll be able to... I mean, there'll, there'll be no segregation. And there's, there's mean, alcohol at the game, no? Oh, no, there's alcohol. People in Australia... Let's hope a lot of people no, don't travel for Glasgow. People, I, was, I was thinking people <laughs> in, in Australia will be responsible. They'll have a bit of a, a, a beer together and a wee bit of banter and they go into the stadium. The Union Bears and the Green Brigade over there. Drinking? Uh, yeah, I don't oh. think they'll be allowed into the country. <laughs> Is that? <laughs> no, I, I, I think it'd be great. I, I think it'd be good for both clubs. Yeah. Aye. Okay. Um, we need to see if we can uh, go for that, Ruffy. See if we can get out there. That would be fantastic. Yeah. Get, get the live broadcast team out there. It'd be great. Yeah, you just got to watch yourself because the hospitality is exceptional. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I'll be a minor, a minor mistake. Oh, over there. oh, there's a story. Back no, back. no, it was just a t too long. We yeah. David Speedy. We get told to go up to this in uh, Scottish village to talk my mingle. With the, it was a day off. Anyway, it was obviously social, a lot of drinking and everything. And David Speedy had just a wee bit too much to drink. And uh, somebody came in and said he was on grandstand in half an hour with the time difference. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Graham Sharp had to carry him back <laughs> to the hotel. The interview lasted a minute. When obviously somebody back home had realised that he, he was wasn't smashed. speaking uh, properly. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. Doesn't say a lot. Doesn't say a lot. I think the professionals at international level have moved on significantly since then. Um, anyway, apart from anything else, it'd be lovely to see it down there. Now, what about uh, the Scottish Premiership fixtures? Uh, this one is interesting because. Uh, you know, James Tavernier has said Rangers need to go on that unbeaten run. It's 10 all the way. There's the uh, fixtures we've got tonight. Celtic, St Mirren, Dundee, Hibs, Hearts against Aberdeen, Livingston, Dundee United, Motherwell, Ross County and St Johnston against Rangers. Well, Richard, can you see Rangers going 10 games unbeaten? No, I don't think so. Um, I think Celtic will beat them. Um, Depending on how far they go in Europe, you know, and depending on which teams they have to play um, on the Sunday coming off of that, um, you know, you look at, you wouldn't, you wouldn't fancy an away trip to or a game against Hearts after a European tie. I know that they beat them very convincingly recently, but um, Hibs are obviously getting better, so I can't see them going unbeaten until the end of the season. Um, just you know, based on the on the the kind of the hangover they've shown for, from the last two European games. Now, granted, these were exceptional nights in Europe for them, but you know, it's so important for for the club to win the league this year, that you can't, you know, they've got to come back and on the Sunday they've got to find a way to pick themselves up. Now, albeit, I think against Indy United they were very unlucky. Um, I thought they played well, and then they played really well in the first half against Motherwell. But they obviously can't sustain that for 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 the both halves. And, and Motherwell got themselves back in the game at Ibrox, which, you know, at halftime you wouldn't have seen coming. So there's obviously a, a kind of frailness about them that. They'll need to get rid of if they're going to have any chance of catching Celtic. Yeah, Giovanni van Bronckhorst had this to say ahead of the game. If you see the league form and results, it's not good enough. The results aren't what we wanted to achieve, but if you look at the way we've played, so much domination and creating so many chances, we shouldn't have dropped points in so many games. There are always mistakes before a goal is made and it's always easy to point fingers at players to blame. Uh, I think we should all take responsibility for the result we had on Sunday and make sure we get the result we want at St Johnston. Yeah, um, listen, I think that's again Giovanni coming out, just basically trying to 
say that it's not all about Alan McGregor, which I think a lot of finger pointing has been uh, happening over the last couple of days. Yeah, well, I don't think it was any glaring mistakes from, from Alan McGregor. I think the second one, maybe positioning, you know, he gets done at his near post, but it's difficult for a goalkeeper if the, if the striker hits the ball right at, right at your feet. You know, it's hard to move your feet. So I don't think it was, it was any exceptional mistakes. I think the problem is Rangers never took their opportunities. Richard said 2 nothing at half-time, could have been 4 or 5. Game should have been dead and buried. I think maybe a bit of complacency set in the second half, a bit of tiredness maybe for the Thursday game. But Motherwell, you know, Rangers at home 2 nothing up. You know, they should never be you know, dropping points from that situation. So they're creating, I think they've had 60 opportunities or 60 chances in the last couple of games. So is tonight going to be the night to take them? You know, St Johnson fans will hope it's not, but there's going to be a time where... They're going to take they're going to take five or six of them, and uh, somebody's going to the end of a hammer. So, will that be tonight? I don't know, but as long as you're creating chances, I think that's the main thing. When you stop creating chances, then I think that's the problem. Yeah. Uh, overall, do you think they are clicking in through the gear? Do you think they are, you know, playing well but just not getting the the the, the breaks that Tam's talking about? Yeah, uh, I think when you're not creating chances, then then you worry, you know. But in the evidence of last week at Motherwell, there was plenty of it. I thought that Kelly was magnificent. Some of the saves he had, you know, for his team. Uh, and as Tam said, if they keep creating chances, they've got players in there that will stick it away. And tonight, you you would have to think that uh, the form that Sir Johnson are on, they shouldn't fail there. Yeah. Okay. Um. What about uh, this? I found it yesterday quite amazing, the, the, the situation with Aaron Ramsey. I don't think he knows when he's actually going to be available to play. Um, you know, Giovanni Van Bronckhorst is, is talking about the fact that he won't be available tonight. He's definitely not going to be available for the weekend if you're listening to the manager. I was listening to him yesterday. And now we've got this story coming out that Rangers have informed Juventus they won't be taking up the option on um, you know Ramsey signing full-time. Even if Ramsey had played every game... I don't think Rangers would have been taking up the option on his wages. I just think it was a non-starter. I mean, anybody who suggests that Rangers were even going to pay a fraction of what he's getting paid, you didn't need their head look. No, he's, he's he's out with Rangers bracket. You know, he's he's on three, four hundred grand a week. You know, it's, it's, Rangers can't get anywhere near that. They only got the deal because of the jiggery pokery with the agent and the club and Rangers and the, yeah. the sort of deal that it was official jiggery pokery. Official, sorry. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the, the deal that they've done between everybody. So. You, say, you mean you say he's out of the bracket though, he doesn't play. I so know. His uh, bracket's going to drop dramatically yep. the longer he goes without playing games. It's been so disappointing because everybody, you know, we thought he was going to come in and really light up Scottish football. <laughs> and, yeah. you know, the Juventus, he's been injured so much for so long. You know, the Juventus fans really don't like him. You know, yep. he's been over there and picked up a lot of money for doing nothing. Nothing. So, and he's doing the same at Rangers at the minute. That's no harm to the boys, he's obviously no fit, but. You know, he needs to get into the team and at least contribute uh, towards the end of the season in some big games. Yep, absolutely. The clock is ticking on it. Rangers fans want to see him uh, in the first team and starting. Of course, he is part of a team, Stephen Davis, Sam Diallo, uh, Ryan Jack and Philip Hollander, who won't be available for tonight's game. Maybe uh, Jack uh, could be back for the weekend as well as Hollander. But nevertheless, uh, tonight is a must-win, uh, Ruffy. I, I, I just... I cannot see, um, you know, I think six points, for, you know, going behind is 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 a tough call with, you know, what effectively would be nine games left. Yeah, well, I've got it in my head that I don't think Rangers and Celtic will lose at home. Yes. Okay, so that, that cuts you down to five games that you've got to make up the points. That, that's if it goes that way. Yeah. You know, so the two old firm games are going to be really important, but... You're right, every point that gets dropped uh, is going to be crucial, you know, and that's why when you get a home game, you, you've got to stick the advantage in there and win your home games. Yep. Um, OK, so how do you see it going? Uh, I, I think Rangers will win. Uh, I don't think it'll be a barrel load. I think maybe 2 nothing, something like that. Yep. Yeah, I agree. I think it'll be relatively comfortable for Rangers. Um, I, I just can't see St Johnson scoring against them. Wait, you see, I'll go up there the night and they'll score in the first minute. <laughs> yeah, but, absolutely. Um, no, I think it'll be comfortable 2 3 nil for Rangers. Yep, um, I, I've got two one Rangers to win this one. I think I went for four nothing to Rangers. What for, that you did? You've lost the plot. Oh, I think I think I think it's going to click. They're going to they're going to they're going to give somebody a battle. And I think it, I think it'll be the night. Yeah. So, uh, earlier in the season, you do you remember that? Earlier in the season, you went through that period of t two or three weeks, roughly. Do you remember they started did, five, go mental, five nothing, six nothing? I, I actually thought it. And then I was bottom of the table. And I went. I need to, you know. Get your act together. Yes. 
Yeah, you go through that wee phase now. The last thing you want to do is lose ground and, and Tam Cowan suddenly oh, comes no up chance. on your tail. There's no chance of Tam catching me. Well, let's, Tam. Have, let's have a look at the predictor right now just to see in case there's any kind of chance. If Tam got a 21-pointer, suddenly he'd be on your tail. Can you um, can you t tell the uh, viewers what a uh, prediction Tam Cowan's went for Motherwell v St Johnson yeah, uh, St we'll, Edwards County tonight we'll get that in a minute we'll get that <laughs> please tell him uh, he's, been, he's, been, he's, been, he's been four or five nothing to be honest with you but <laughs> Tam's on 198 Hugh's on 224 you're on 226 so am I which is just dreadful I've collapsed there's been a few results I just did not see coming Alison's on 236 and the bold Ruffy has just actually moved to the front of the predictor um just sensible predictions, you know, not not going for anything outrageous, just yeah. sort of. A and of course, waiting till everybody else is posted so you can play a yes. spread betting. You do, you do it all the time. You do, you do it all the time. You're cheating, you're cheating, cheat all the time. I yeah. don't get that. Why would I wait for everybody else? Because then you weigh up how you can actually Undercut balance some of the yep. points. Yeah, yeah, but if I followed Alison, she got nothing last week. So yeah. why would I look at her? But you just follow the guy at the bottom. You, you follow. You just follow some of the guys and think. I'll do this, I'll do that. And you can't finish bottom. Yeah. That's Don't you kid negative. yourself. You are as sneaky as they come, by the way. Um, anyway, apart from anything else, that's how it looks, Tam. So, uh, four, four nothing for Rangers. Uh, Tam's gone for it big style on this one. Um, so, we'll wait and see uh, if that's going to be the case. Uh, elsewhere, at Celtic against St Mirren. Um, Ange Postecoglou hoping his sides can... Uh, get back on the goal scoring streak here but he, he does admit that the change of manager at St Mirren won't make a difference, they're still a strong side they're coming up against They've been pretty tight defensively um, you know, I think Jim had done a really good job with them and I think that'll continue um, obviously they've got a new manager as you said but he hasn't had a lot of time to sort of work with the team last week, you know, they went down to 10 men pretty early which you know probably didn't give them a chance to, to to change things too much within the game. So we're expecting a tough game. We're expecting, you know, a team it's going to be hard to break down and, you know, it's up to us to find the solutions. Yeah, well, managers changing during the season sometimes can unnerve players. But this was a side, you know, on a, on a really good good run at St Man. Yeah, I think, I think this is probably why it could unnerve them more. I think, you know, if, if you're in a place where you're not doing well, team struggling and a manager comes in it can give you a boost you know the players seem to up their game they want to work hard because they want to be in the team but if you could go into a team who have just lost a manager because he's kind of went on to, to bigger and better things mm. um, then you know it can't you know you, you're still going to have that fighting for places but the guys who've been regulars you know their nose might be out of joint if the manager comes in and kind of sees it slightly differently so um, it's, a, it's a more difficult task um, for the manager to come in and, and keep this team in this squad in the, the same place they were under Jim Goodwin because like I say he might see things slightly different and maybe change a couple of players here and there and that might upset the uppercut. Yeah, um, what are you going for in this one? It's, I think it's going to be a relatively comfortable <coughs> one for Celtic, I think 3-1. Yeah, I've got 3 nothing on this one Ruffy, I just think they're going to um, you know, get back on it uh, uh, and especially at home as you mentioned you don't see Celtic Rangers dropping too many points or anything. No, I think if you look at most of the, the games that Celtic have at home it's possession something like 75% you know and that means the other team's backs to the wall and you have to say that if they like Rangers you know if they create that many chances sometime it's going to, somebody's going to stick it away. Yeah, I like Stephen Robinson as a manager though, I think he's a good I think he's a good man manager too. Um, certainly, what he achieved at Motherwell was something to be proud of. No, I think his record at Motherwell was outstanding. I think he, got, he obviously got his move down south and he's, he's ended up back in, in Scotland. I think they'll be well organised, they work hard, they'll be physical. And I, I don't see Celtic you know, winning this comfortably. I think this will be another tight game at home. I think I went for 2 1. I, I, obviously, I was at Easter Road on Sunday. Yeah. Celtic never created anything, really. Barely a bad chance the first half. I thought Celtic looked knackered. Yeah. Uh, so whether he brings players in the night, freshens it up, you know, so it's, it's quite a quick turnaround from, from Sunday. So I think Celtic will win, but it'll, it'll, it'll be quite close to one. Let's never mind talking about Aaron Ramsey. It must be some hamstring injury if Kyogo's been out this length of time, Tam. Nobody's seen hiding her yet. I get told from a decent source about th three weeks ago that he was out for the season. That he was wearing the kick of ball this season. So whether that's true or not, I don't know, but the signs are that could possibly be the case. Yeah, if that was the case, I mean, listen, they're talking about, I think the Japanese manager can't count on him. Um, Ange Postecoglou said that, you know, it'd be a push for the old firm game, that's April. So, 
there's something in it that uh, Tam's mentioning there, that would be a huge blow for them. That's massive, you know, I think uh, top teams like Rangers and Celtic usually have four top class strikers. I don't know. think it's title deciding, Ruffy, but you no, know, because they've got on without But I said anyway. the other day when the, the, the top goal scorers in the, the Premiership get put up there, it's a wee boy for Ross County, it's the top. Charles Cook. Yeah, Celtic don't have a, a, a striker in the top five. Yeah. Goal scoring. You know, usually this time of the year there'd be somebody sitting on 20 goals, somebody on 25. That There's no anybody on 10. You know, so you have to look at it and it is a problem that the strikers aren't scoring goals. It's a, it's a good point you make there because Malky Mackay earlier on in the week had mentioned, Richard, that he thinks Regan Charles Cook is a shout for player of the year. I mean, I'm, I'm looking, I'm saying to myself, who's a shout, you know, in Celtic or Rangers for player of the year? There's nobody really standing out. I think the only one, in terms of his goals, you look at Morelos, but then he's behind Drake and Charles Cook. So, yeah, I, I have to agree. I think, you know, Ross County, obviously, sco they're third top goal scorers in the league, which is remarkable considering their league position. Um, but, yeah, he's, at the moment, he... Because I always think that, you know, players out with the old firm, they're all, they always seem to have to do more, you know, because, you know, Morelos scoring... 15 goals, 20 goals at Rangers is not the same as Regan Charles Cook scoring 15 goals at Ross Far more Kent. difficult. Yeah. It's far more difficult for him because he gets less opportunities. Now, I'm not saying it's not great for Morelos to be where he is in the scoring charts, but it's it's a, it's, it's a, it's a much better season for Charles Cook at the moment. Yeah. And if he continues the way he is, then I think he's... I, I don't know who else, like you say, I don't know who else you'd look at for Player of the Year because yeah. no one has been... Um, as consistently good as he has. Yeah, it's an interesting one because you, you look and you say to yourself, okay, you know, out with Celtic and Rangers, you're trying to say to yourself, who has picked up, you know, the wins? It's it's usually all split between Celtic and Rangers. The last man to do it out with Celtic and Rangers was Michael Higdon, and what a night that was, <laughs> Tom. He ended up the night, didn't he? <laughs> right, well, Just well, after Ruffy and I left him. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, it is unusual, obviously, outside the Celtic Rangers for somebody to pick up that award, but I think if he scores 20 goals, and he's, he's got 12 or 13, he's, it's quite possible. I think if he scores 20 goals for us County, I think you've been you've been the top three anyway at least. Yeah. Have you got it? Have you have you got somebody in mind? Because obviously you're ten games away from the end of the season. The players will start to vote round about five games away from the end of the season. It's very difficult. You know, there was a time when it was Aribo was flying. Yeah. I think he's come yeah. off it a wee bit. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Carl McGregor picked up an injury. He was doing well as well. They were the two I was focusing on really. Yeah. Morel lost the poor start of the season, playing really well at the minute under Van Ken Bonkers. So. Kenny Whitson's mentioned somebody which I think might be in with a shout. Craig Gordon. Um, he's would, been playing well. I would, I would possibly prefer Seagrist. Yeah, yeah, to Craig Gordon. No chance. No. No, I think he's. I think he's a good season. Yeah. Seagrist. Oh That's right. Okay. Yeah. I thought you were saying he was a better goalkeeper. No. 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 no you talking, no, no, you're talking Gordon, about Seagrist uh, for a player of the year? Yes. Craig Gordon is a better goalkeeper. There's no doubt about yeah, that. Yeah. But, but Seagrist is a fantastic. Uh, the saves he's had with Dundee United this year yeah. has been incredible. Yeah, I could see that coming near the headline. Right back <laughs> argues with goalkeeper over, <laughs> over goalkeeper's qualities. Um, but uh, nevertheless, have you got somebody in mind? Have you somebody that stuck out? You know, recently it's been, you know, for a spell when Kyogo came in, even though you were thinking him, um, Ryan Kent is kind of started to get more consistent. Obviously, his performances in Europe, I know they technically shouldn't count, but, um, but no, I mean, if you get. Most of the time, you look at the top goal scorers, don't you? That that's tends to be how it is, unless there's someone had a remarkable season, which up until this point, I don't think there has been. So then, for me at the moment, is is kind of Charles Cook, you know? Yeah. Like he, what, like I say, what he's doing at Ross County, on you know probably a third of the chances that all the, the old firm players are getting is remarkable. So at the moment, he's got to be head of head of the, the pack in terms of obviously he's head of the pack in terms of the goal scoring, but even for player of the season. Yeah, he's got a good trick in him as well. Um, hard worker. Um, of course, lots of people offering their thoughts. Brian H says, Tony Watt would have been player of the year if he'd stayed at Motherwell, but mm. uh, he's gone to Dundee United. Uh, always good to get a, a Motherwell fan's view on it. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, did we get everybody's prediction Celtic comfortably? Anybody going? I went 2-0. Two, two no. uh, I've gone 2-1 two one for me in Celtic. One. Richard one. Tight. Three one. Okay, Dundee Hebbies. Um, Nesbitt out for the season. It was a bad challenge. It was. It was just. It was one of those. You know, he's he's fallen into him. It's it's, and and suddenly he's got damaged to his is it his ligaments. Yeah, I found out straight after the game that they thought it was his cruciate, which was disappointing. And you know, I think you could tell as soon as, as soon as he went down, he was 
signal to the bench. And I think you yeah. can always tell as a player, you can tell when it was a bad injury and he's got up and he's straight away when he put weight on it, he's went like that, I'm, I'm, I'm done. So it's a big, big blow. I know he's not had a great season for Hibs, but he's still the best striker at the club and uh, he's a Scottish international. You know, he does a lot of work off the ball. He's been getting better in recent weeks with his work rate and his ball up, hold up playing stuff. So that's going to be a big blow. Hibs are very, very short up front now. In the last eight games, I've drew a blank six of them. So goals have been a real problem for Hibs. And, you know, it might just be that he looks into the youth setup, you know, under 18s, something like that, reserves. Is there anybody? There is. There's a, a couple of young boys, Gary O'Connor's son, doing well, Josh, um, scoring goals. Uh, there's a young lad, Ethan Leadlaw. Um, young striker for Hibs, both of them are, are very good. Are they ready? Don't know. You'll never find out if you don't what, throw them in. What age are they? 18, 19. But sometimes that can give you a wee lift, just a, a, a young boy buzzing about up front, you know, the energy, the enthusiasm. The fans will give them a chance because they've come through the ranks. Yeah. So it might just be some, somebody like that. Is that it somebody in. to play off uh, Doidge? Doidge, I mean, for me, Doidge is the only recognised striker Hibs have got at the minute fit. Yeah. You know, the, the boy Elkerson, uh, is, is, I think, has picked up an injury. Apart from that, Muller's not really a striker, he's a wide man, yeah. so they're really short up front hibs and that's been a problem scoring goals. OK, I still think they'll edge it tonight because Dundee are woeful unless suddenly Mark McGee has got something out of them, Richard, I can't see it. No, neither can I. I think, you know, hibs have, have been doing OK, you know, they're, they're kind of they're good at keeping the ball in their own half. Um, obviously, trying to get that transition to go forward seems to be a bit of a, a problem for them. Um, you know, Maloney's a he's a possession-based manager sometimes, possession to death. But um, yeah, I mean, like I so said, going on, going on the way Dundee performed at the weekend and the goals they conceded. Um, then you know, I think Alan Forrest picked the ball up about four or five yards from goal and, and ran by three players without even having to dodge a tackle, really. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, if they allow the Hibs players that kind of space, then then Hibs have, have got more than enough quality to beat them. But I think, yeah, I don't think it's going to be a high-scoring game. But I think Hibs will just edge it, maybe one 0 Yeah, I've got two-one Ruffy Hibs. Uh, I think I've got 2 0. I, I think the confidence will be low. Uh, and I think if Hibs do score, you know, the fans don't look as if they're at this moment getting right behind the side. So that just puts added pressure on it. So I think I've went Hibs 2 0. Yeah, OK. Uh, Wait for 1 0 Hibs. Yeah. But I've, I've, I've been at Dundee when things are not going well and it can be pretty poisonous uh, for the home, home team. Have you so ever tipped Hibs to lose on this programme? Uh, don't think so. No, no I, don't think, I think I went Rangers to beat them a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> okay. Um, is that too loud? No, exactly. Harps Aberdeen. Um, Andrew Considine is in line for a for a new deal. Um, hasn't kicked a ball since August. Obviously, I, I think. I don't know about you. I mean, Andrew Considine is a, is a good player. He's been a great servant for Aberdeen. Um, has he been the real big miss for them? Do you think in that back line? Yeah, I think he has. I think he you only appreciates Sunday when they're not there. And I think he's I think he obviously appreciate the Aberdeen supporters. Aberdeen supporters love him up there. Yeah. You know, he's been a great servant for them. But him coming out of the team, I think they've you've found this season that they've been very porous at the back of Aberdeen. You know, they've missed him. He can play a number of positions, he can play left back, he can play left side of three, he can play left left side of four. He's versatile. Um, he got into the Scotland team which was great for him, a great reward for him. So I think they've missed him probably on the pitch and in the dressing room and that as well, before games, after games. So He's been a big miss and I'm glad to see they're looking after him. I like to see that. Guys that have been loyal to the club and they give him a new contract and I'm sure he'll be back next summer. Yeah, you played with him. Mm. Yeah, what's he like? Uh, he's, he's a great, great lad. Um, very quiet. Kind of, well, he was when he kind of, he changed all that, didn't he, with that video? But um, no, he's 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 well-spoken. Um, he's he's kind of from a decent family, but he's, he's hard. Like, he's so, like, he loves tackling. Never seems to get hurt. Um, but good on the ball, composed, he's a good organiser and what I love about him is for the past, I don't know what, 10 years, managers come in and they're oh, we need to sign a centre half and they sign a centre half and they play him and then they realise no, Andy's better and he's been doing that for his, his, his entire career at Aberdeen, other centre halves come in, either, eventually they either play alongside him or they don't play because they realise that he's the, the better option and he's still the better option, you know the way Aberdeen are leaking goals at the moment he's probably the better option with one knee um, just because he will go and head it and he'll be dominant, um, but it's, as Tam said, it's great that they're giving him a new contract, and you know I'm, I'm sure he's got another few years left in him. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and uh, let's hope everything goes without any setbacks for him, and he gets back in that Aberdeen side because I think centre of defence is, is seriously in need of either rebuilding or you know change the partnerships. 
Yeah, it used to be always a strength. Aberdeen was their two centre halves, you know, and uh, you know that's what that's what they built on right through their team. Uh, I, I'm surprised uh, he hadn't scored more goals, Constantine. No, when he goes up corners and that, yeah. you know. I know. I know. It was a, a game at Dundee. He got a hat that's trick. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but he, he's always in there, and he, he looks a big, powerful boy. You know, I, I thought. I thought he would have scored more goals with the situations he gets himself in, but you just want him back on the park, don't you? Yeah, absolutely. I'm just looking, Ruffy, at overall his career goals at Aberdeen, um, and it's uh, 12, whew, 32, 40, 41 goals in total. Um, Smelling me. So. <laughs> Can they score when you're on the bench? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> By the way, I was just going to say, 41 goals, and I think he's just short of 500 games. Yeah. I mean, it's all right for a centre half. That's a good That's well, a good, good record. Yeah. Yeah. So shut it. He's all right, no, okay? I thought, I thought. Tell me his dad. No. Um, anyway, apart from anything else, um, you must have played against his dad. Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, I, Duke I Considine. As soon as he mentioned his name, I just remember his hair. It was all over the place. It was one of these, uh, he had perms before everybody else. Yeah. Calm your jets, baby. I don't want you lecturing anybody on hairstyles. <laughs> You'll have a long, hard look at yourself before we get the 1978 curl out. Um, anyway, apart from anything else, Jim Goodwin still believes in this early reign that he has as Aberdeen manager that they are uh, in the running. They could make a European spot. That's the you know the short term objectives since I've came in. That is to get back into the top six. Um, and then ultimately to try and put a bit of pressure on the teams in fifth and fourth and, uh, and you know, just try and close the gap on them. And we've not given up on European football for next year. You know, we're, uh, we're not accepting the position that we're in. Um, there's still plenty of time to turn it around, uh, but we need to start winning games. You know, the draws aren't enough. We need to start getting three points on the board and hopefully that'll start tomorrow. I think they're good enough to get to Europe. Not this season, though. No, no, nah, not this season. I think the next season, possibly. I think they've they've left it a bit late. Um, I think Jim will come in and stabilise it and get them harder to break down, harder to beat. But I don't <laughs> see them, you know, breaking into that top four. I think they'll get a point at Tynecastle tonight. I think yeah. they can go there and get a point. I think they'll they'll go there and maybe get a score draw. But I don't see them finishing the top four. Yeah, I've got Hearts to win it two one, Ruffy. I had one each yesterday, then I slept on it last night. Oh, and, uh, did you? And changed your mind. Because <laughs> changed your mind. Two one. So you were last to Peter predictions in again. Two one. Oh, he's last. Look, there he's the last man, and he's gone two one again. That busy life, you know. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Richard. What are you going um, to? I would, I would agree with you guys. I think maybe two one Hearts. Two one the Jambos. Okay, there's a sensible man sitting there. Um, what about Motherwell against Ross County? A game I'm looking forward to, Ruffy. A game I'm going to get down because I think County plays some good football. Uh, and Motherwell, on the evidence of the weekend, certainly will be whew, lifted by that yeah. draw against Rangers. Yeah, I think if it had been at Ross County, I probably would have uh, changed my prediction. But I think Motherwell at home have been fairly good. And as you say, the result that the weekend will be a pick-up. Uh, and I'm going to go for a home win. I think I've went for 2-1. Yeah, um, I like the fact that uh, you know it's the old journalistic statement. A manager makes a statement, then you go to the other manager and say, "By the way, you'll never guess what he uh, said." <laughs> and this is classic here because Graham Alexander's come out and rubbish Giovanni Van Bronckhorst's claim that Rangers would have beaten Motherwell if VAR was introduced. Um, into it, he says, "Listen, there's a couple of games that's finished one-one in 2021. Itton's equaliser for Park Zakala's oh. goal at Ibrox. They would have been. Uh, they would have been Start scanning saying, through the old games, well, didn't you? Same videos. We're, we're, we're going back to the you know playoff <laughs> games and everything now. The way this is all looking, isn't it? Yeah, as and listen, managers will always moan. You know, if their decisions go against them, that's just football, isn't it? But uh, they say they even them out, even themselves out at the end of the season. But I don't think that's always the case. So." They'll be disappointed, but I don't think Rangers and Van Bronckers, because of any complaints, as we spoke about earlier, if they take their chances, you know, they don't need to worry about Motherwell at the other end. Yeah, Motherwell have done well, though. I mean, this is a good season for them again. Yeah, um, and obviously they've had to cope with losing their top goal scorer as well. Um, and I think the other guys have came, you know, Van Veen obviously missed out last game there, but he's he's kind of chipped them with a few goals. We've seen, was it Willery? Um, some pace the two of that them. was I mean it was a Willard, it was Willard, yeah. it was that I mean that was incredible it looked like uh, Lundstrom was in quicksand yeah you know I mean like, I know the guy is, is fast <laughs> but you know he's given him a, what, a 10 yard start and a 15 yard race and beat him there by five yards so yeah. it's incredible pace and, and like you say that getting a draw away to Ibrox is always a great result and it does give you a confidence and um, you, you know but then on the flip side then they're now playing Ross County who themselves had a good result who score a lot of goals I, I think it's going to be a scored rank at 2-2 uh, score draw between the two of them because I think both teams will score. 
Yeah, it's funny you saying that. I think I've got it down. Is I think it's going to be two two as well. Motherwell two, Ross County two. It's funny, uh, you know, just looking at that there when uh, Woolery goes past. Uh, Lundstrom, you're, you're waiting on the defender pulling up with a hamstring or something. <laughs> but do you know, I'm disconnecting this night. I was going to say, you <laughs> reminded me of someone that you played with. Who, you know, Didier Gat used to be able to <laughs> at Hibs <laughs> and at Celtic. He used to be able to kick the ball and give the defender ten yards and leave him for dead. He was the fastest guy I've ever seen in my life. I remember he only played three games for Hibs because he only signed a he signed a one month contract at Hibs. Yeah, he was terrible in training. The McLeish just gave him a, gave him a month deal. And um, he played. Dundee United at home in the first game of the season and the ball just got punted over the top and the boy David Partridge the centre half for Dundee United had, was thrown onto it it like 10 yards and DDR just went woof and absolutely roasted them for about 5 yards he'd done the same the week later eh, to big boy Stephen Tweed I know, know two of the quickest centre halves yeah. again just a ball up the line and he just smoked him for pace and then scored I think he scored 3 goals in 2 games and then he went to sell it for 50 grand yeah. but Agath was Without doubt, the fast one of the fastest players I think has ever played in Scottish football. Yeah, he was incredible. I mean, and by the way, he could do that to really yeah. good defenders. I mean, I watched him do the same to one of the German defenders for Stuttgart. Gave him a ten-yard start and just played the ball past him, and then woof, away he went. Yeah, I mean, everybody used to talk about the the other Celtic players in that team, but no, he was a big, big part mm. uh, the European run that they had. You know, and he was tremendous. You know, as you say, the the pace that he had as well, and and consistency levels were always good. I think that yeah. he could do it over a distance as well, couldn't he? You know, it wasn't yeah, like halfway he was, line. Yeah. Scott mm. Tiffany, he's he's probably the quickest player I've seen over ten yards. It's yeah. frightening how quick he is. But then, obviously, of, over a longer distance, you'd catch him. Whereas a gat could run the length of the pitch <laughs> and be rapid for the full pitch. I can remember watching him thinking, "Geez, you know, it's like it's like he's running against like little kids. How how much quicker he was than people." Yeah. Um, it was quite impressive to watch. It's that moment, the 100 metres, when uh, you very rarely, it's always a close call, but when you, you watch Usain Bolt in the Olympics and he looks round and smiles at everybody <laughs> and they're all so far behind, it's that same feeling. Anyway, we've got, I've got 2-2, two, two, Ruffy, what did you say? Uh, I think Motherwell 2-1. Yeah. 2-1 to Ross County. 2-1 at Ross County. Oh, that's an interesting one. I'm quite happy with that, Tam. Uh, Livingston against Dundee United. Before we get to your game from last night, Livingston against Dundee United. Livy, five wins, two draws out of the ten games. Hammer Dundee at the weekend. Looking good, Ruffy. Um, and I think David Martindale. You know, here's, a, here's a great shout. Manager of the year? Who gets manager of the year, Ruffy? Whoever wins the league. You think so? In, in, in one of these well, crazy Dick, Dick Campbell won the championship but there yeah. you are, it's a shout isn't it well, well we even well, Ian McCall if we won the championship we, we were the promoted well Callum Davison never got it last year and they won two trophies and Stephen Gerrard got it Aye, that was, yeah absolutely that was that was mental. Yeah. <laughs> mental well it's not exactly it's not exactly setting a precedent <laughs> <laughs> Celtic won the league under Neil Lennon and Mick Sue Patalainen got it after <laughs> Lavin no, and he'd won nothing you know that's your favourite night. night isn't it Ruffy I Ruffie? was sitting beside Lenny that night he was at my table <laughs> and the boy went uh, and the manager of the year is mixed up and he stood up and they went are you having a joke <laughs> Yeah, that dinner. wasn't quite the words <laughs> yeah, well, obviously, the cuff, cuff <laughs> yeah, down, absolutely. I would like to, you know, if an old firm manager wins the league, then does he deserve the manager of the year? That's that's. Well, you've got the thing. What if he wins a treble? If he wins a treble, it's different. But if he, if he if he just wins the league like Gerard did last year, it's like, well, that's what your that's what your job. That's what you're expected to do. Mm. You know, yeah. Callum, what Callum Davidson achieved last year was ridiculous. Something that will never be seen yeah. again. And yet he can't even win the manager of the year. I know, obviously, the way it's transpired, he's, he's struggling this year. But yeah. I just think, you know, give a guy the award when he when he truly really deserves it. He didn't win it last year because they cancelled the awards ceremony um, last year. But I think the football writers still had well, a, yeah, yeah. a manager yeah. of the year. But you're right. I agree with you wholeheartedly. I mean, it was just, it was an absolute shoe in for his achievement. But over and above that, the answer to your question, if Celtic and Rangers win, it's it's about the manner of the, the win. It's about the way they play, and I, I, I just don't see, well, Giovanni Van Bronco's not going to win the manager of the year. He's yeah. just in the door. Ange Postecoglou for turning around an absolute shambles of a, a season. Possibly. Possibly, yeah. but, but I, I, I'm with you. If Dick Campbell um, guided a broth to the top flight, Ruffy, that's some achievement for a part-time club, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that, that would get my vote yeah. uh, if, if I were to win that league. 
Let's hope he doesn't get my vote. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, apart from anything else, uh, da fans. David Martindale's had a great season. I think I tipped him to get relegated, and I'm glad that the, the custard pie's out there because, he, you know, he's 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 been the main story for his back, you know, catalogue of what his life was about, uh, and then all of a sudden he's just let the team go on and do the talking. Yeah, and I think, what, what you know, and I don't know if it was... You know, well, a thought out thing, but I thought what was brilliant was when he came out early and said, We won't get relegated. You know, I, I believe in when the players I've got, we won't get relegated. Yeah. I think as a player hearing that, you kind of, you know, when they were struggling as well. When they were struggling. Yeah. So at the, at the time, you you know, nobody wants to be in the relegation dogfight and you start thinking, Oh, no, you know, I really don't want this. Where are we going to get a win from? But then you hear your manager come out and just completely back you to the hilt. You go, You know what? We're not going to get relegated, and then that kind of that feeds through the rest of the team, and and from that you know from that little period they had with a struggle, they've been they've been excellent, um, you know kind of none more so than the other night, you know kind of mm. putting four past I know, a poor Dundee side, but yeah. I think you know I think to, I think to, you know Dundee United, I think they bullied Dundee United, <coughs> I think they won that, yeah, yeah, I think they won it two 0 Yep, I've uh, got Livingston to win two one. Yeah, Livingston for me. Yep, Rafi. I've got because Seagrass won each. Yeah, okay, right, okay, nobody really cares about the goal, you love him by the way, um, well it's not going to be a goalie win it, and I like Isaac who says, Jack Ross won manager of the year when Rodgers had just secured the treble, the, inv the invincible <laughs> treble, yeah. I mean it just shows yeah. you how mad it all is, um, anyway, um, and thanks to lots of people who obviously are, you know, shouting from the high heavens about the merits of uh, Dick Campbell. So we shall see. Uh, Livingston against Dundee United completes a roundup of the Scottish Premiership games. How do you think it's all going to go? We'll get reaction from managers and players on tomorrow's programme. Um, last night, our both one party Thistle won. Your man here got a good ride up right across the press um, when he came on, which is difficult for you because obviously you were... Uh, otherwise engaged, but one one against our broth. They they they've just gone off the rails. Are you just delighted with the point? Yeah, I think we'd have liked the three points. You yeah. know that uh, we've I think it's three defeats in eighteen or something like that. And we've been sitting in fifth place for about two months. Up to fourth now. now we're fourth now, yeah. so we're we're looking up the way. But anybody who's seen the championship, it's but winning games. They're from top to bottom, everybody can beat everybody. You, yeah. You've got to take your chances when they're there, and if you don't take them, you end up drawing and losing. So it's a really competitive league, but you need the three points. And, and I, I'm, I decided not to ask you on the basis you played in the game. <laughs> Should you have won the game? <laughs> um, I think over the piece, a draw was fair. Yeah. I think the first half, they absolutely battered us, scored the goal. Then then Jamie Stedden, our goalkeeper, has an unbelievable save from, from a... a Bobby Lynn free kick, like uh, kind of even watching, you're thinking you're just looking at the nestling top corner. He gets fingertips to it, touches it wide. Um, but then the second half, it was a kind of role reversal. Um, you know, introduction of some key players, and we absolutely battered <laughs> them in the second half. Yeah, um, <laughs> scored early, and then you know we had a few decent kind of Brian Graham's had a couple of half chances that he was unlucky with, um, and then Kevin Holt's got a chance, maybe five. Ten, five, ten minutes from the end of the game, uh, a breakaway, two v, two on one. Connor uh, Murray squares on the ball, and he's just got the goalie to beat, and he puts it wide. Yeah, uh, we got a score, um, and then obviously we would take three points. But I think over the balance of the both halves, um, a draw was was a fair result. Not what we wanted, but you know it's a very difficult venue to go to. And, and I think we had written you off earlier on um, with regards to this whole playoff situation, and and now I'm looking at it, I'm saying to myself, well, what do you need to do now? Uh, to keep yourself in there and where do you want to finish the second realistic I'm looking at a broth it looks as if the bubbles burst a wee bit I think Kelly will slowly but surely just go past them um, I'm not too sure they've got you know they've, they've, they can dig in they can grind out results um, I know Kamarnik I think they're missing Lafferty for possibly a few games um, he's kind of been an inspired signing but even in those games where he's he's been the difference you know they haven't kind of romped to any victory you know it's, it's all all the games are really tight um, and I think it's typical uh, talking about uh, the old firm and the home games. I think that's that's key. Win your home games and, and don't get beat on the road. Um, then you know that'll go a long way to winning the title. But I think I think it's still going to be tight. I don't think anyone's going to. You know, we've got twelve games left or something. Like that. I don't think anyone's going to run away with it. Um, I think it's going to go right down to the wire. Yeah, capable of winning against Inverness Queen of the South at home. Got to hope so. Yeah, I think I think we've got. We've, if we get any aspirations to win the league, I think we need to to take at least four points of those two games. So, um, I think I think we can do that. 
Yeah. Still thinking about winning the league. Of course. Until yeah. until until we can't reach uh, whoever's at the top, then 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 we'll always be thinking about winning the league because we've played everyone now a few times, and we feel that we're just as good as any of the teams. Yeah. Okay. A couple of things before we go, lads. I'm always like a German for a quote. They're never shy. They're like Dutch people. There's no such thing. I've never met an introverted Dutch person, and certainly not a Ger a German who's uh, backwards at coming forwards because. Uh, Lutter Matthias has absolutely ripped into Rangers. I read this and I thought to myself, have a word with yourself. Um, he, he says, I like Bo Borussia Dortmund. It's a great club with everything you could wish for as a football player and fan. They uh, have capable people running the club, some of the best fans in the world, an incredible stadium. But Dortmund has achieved a very special treble this season of embarrassing cup disasters in the Champions League the German Cup and now the Europa League. The latest was losing to a third-rate team, Glasgow Rangers, in the Europa League. Unbelievable. In Scotland, by the way, he says Rangers are only second behind Celtic. He's fair ripped into them. I thought it was bang out of order. Yeah, well, an old slang, he's talking a lot of Colin Nish. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> So <laughs> that old. Yeah. Well, this is a little bit for Yeah, Colin, you played with Colin this time. Yeah. <laughs> there he is, though, many times, thank yeah. um, it's, a, it's a bit harsh, isn't it, from Lotter? He was uh, a great player, but for oh, God's he was sake. a fantastic player. Well, world class player, but uh, I think he's on the too many steins. Yeah. Beer over there. Absolutely. Uh, Russia, have you got three, uh, roughly, have you got three billion pounds to try and buy Chelsea? Because it looks as if that's what the uh, club uh, could be looking for. Roman Abramovich wants three billion. Yeah, well, obviously. <laughs> He's That's been with Lota Matthias, I think he got his <laughs> yeah. billion for a club. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think the only people that could come in there would be the Saudis. I thought that's the kind of money you're talking about. But uh, it's just amazing how this is all turned, isn't it? You yeah, know, absolutely. It's just incredible. Last night I watched uh, Tottenham uh, getting knocked oh, out. Horrendous I mean, game of football. It, it's strange, but there's managers changing all over the place. I think Conte could go shortly. Oh, they were terrible last night. They're quite a strong team. I watched the first hour of the game and it was. Shocking. Yeah. I just turned off. I didn't even care who won at the end. It was, and Middlesbrough won an extra time, didn't they? Yeah, so. it, was a, it was a peach of a goal as well. Uh, Antonio Conte, uh, I think at this moment, is just saying, look, we just need to recover. It's up and down. I always say that uh, we have to become uh, stronger. Uh, and uh, if we want to be, want to become competitive, uh, we have to be a, a, a stable team. And... Uh, uh, too many up and down still uh, for, for us and uh, for sure I repeat and we have to continue to work very hard and to try in the future to learn about this defeat Yeah, I'm looking at it <coughs> and uh, I'm saying to myself, Ruffy he looks like a man who's absolutely resigned to his fate Yeah, I, I think we all saw the documentary in, in Tottenham and it, it didn't look that professional a club, you know, it looked if you just go there, well, particularly the managers seem to go there and it's London, you know, they get good, good contract and if it doesn't work out, they walk away. I think he walked away for Chelsea with 22 million, you know, in his deal and unfortunately some of them are like that, And uh, but he's he's a tremendous player, you know, that's what you remember him for. Yeah, um, it's not happening. I think he go, I don't think he'll walk out the door, I think he'll, he'll <laughs> accept his fate and take the money. Yeah, that's what dreams are made of, isn't it? You know, go there, get a four-year contract, and leave after six months or however yeah. long he's been there. It's um, like I say, I've said it on here before. I find it difficult to get in, involved with the English game because the money, because everything's overinflated. The opinion of the game, the opinion of players, um, and I just, it's the money down there. I think is ruining ruining the game, mm. um, and I find it hard to get involved. In it. Yeah, I quite. I'd like to go down there and get sacked. Oh, I'd love to just. I'd love to go down there and be the worst manager in the history of English football. <laughs> <laughs> worse, worse than, was it Frank de Boer? de Boer one and went to Crystal Palace and was seven eight seven and get paid off. Four games. Four games. Four defeats. No goals for. Yeah, I'd take that and get a cut a million pound. Yeah. Absolutely, you would buy. You take the flak as well, just for a short period of time. Uh, anyway, listen. Uh, hopefully, you've enjoyed the chat from the guys. Uh, tomorrow we'll dissect the results in the Scottish Premiership in the company of Tam Cowan. Ruffy will be here with me. Great to see Richard here. We're going to be monitoring uh, his progress. He's in now. He's got all the appearances. Ruffy, he's in for the start yes. party. How do you feel? 
Feel uh, privileged to be part of it. Yeah, absolutely. The good news is <laughs> we're the only party you're going to because <laughs> the BBC don't have one. So there you are, you've cracked uh, it. Eh? Yep. There, there's, there's no, there's no stab- this is our Christmas party as well, yes. which will roll into the end of yep. season one as well. It's so fine for everything as well, which is even better. You better ask the wife if it's okay because you know what it's like. You need to get a get out of jail card so we can. Uh, so we can have a right good night, Ruffy. It's a good laugh, isn't it? She'll be, yeah, she'll be away on tour, so it'll be fine. It's a long day. <laughs> it is a very long day. It's just one of the stamina ones, isn't it? You've got to pace yourself. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, you two were too busy chatting to each other and you didn't notice that we've actually got a house for a party as well because oh, she's away on tour. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Oh, right. You need to listen yes. to these things, guys. Get the album on. Yep, absolutely simple as that. Anyway, great to have Richard, Tam and Ruffy here. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. If you download the PLZ Soccer app, uh, you'll get all the breaking football news as well as being able to watch the programme live. Thanks for watching today. We'll see you tomorrow.